welcome back to my channel. So this is a brand new week um, of summer school. Um, I think I only got out my previous week's video a couple days ago, so this one should go up this weekend, um, provided nothing happens this week. <laughs> this week. Um, we are still in the same room. Um, so if you haven't seen that video and you don't understand our setup, I will put it in the cards right here. Um, we are right now um, in the process. This week is moving week where we get to move back to one of the kindergarten classrooms. So we have a little bit more access to kindergarten supplies and things and materials and, and such. <clears throat> but I don't know what day that week, this week, that's going to happen. I do have two meetings this week with some of our new staff members. I told you guys in another previous video um, that our wonderful principal is retiring, yay for him. Um, and we are getting a fabulous new principal, so we're so excited. Um, but we also have some other new staff members, so we're gonna be meeting with those guys this week and kind of going over some of the new curriculum. <clears throat> I also told you that we adopted Wonders in our district, so I don't know anything about Wonders. If you know anything about Wonders, please leave me a comment down below. Um, I know that their decodables are fairly decent. That's about all I know. And I only know that from other friends that are very strict science of reading and they seem to um, uh, think that their decodables are, are okay. Um, but I don't know anything about the curriculum. That's probably one curriculum I have never used. Usually the reading curriculums that I've had in districts are um, like Hoot and Mifflin, which I think changed to just Harcourt, um, or Journeys um, curriculum, which is the one that it seems like most districts buy into is the Journeys, which I did not like Journeys. I didn't like the stories in Journeys. I thought the setup for it and the flow of it was pretty decent. Um, the first year I used it, but the, the stories in it, for the most part, I did not like. Um, so I've never just, I've just never been a curriculum girl in that sense. I've always liked to just write my own stuff. Um, and then kind of pull that stuff in when I need it, if that makes sense. Um, hopefully the wonders will be pretty decent. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see. Um, but we are getting set up. I am pulling out copies. I just took the tents down and packed all that stuff away. This week is pirate week. So I'm going to pull out my pirate books, put away all the camping books and get set up. So I will catch you guys in a little bit. So first of all, I don't know if you've seen poppets, but look what I found. Isn't he cute? It's a little shark one. I thought I could use it as a reward, um, more as a fidget thing than um, an actual poppet, but if you don't know what poppets are, these are great little things. They're about five dollars each, and usually the ones that I use with my students for activities are bigger. They're like this big. Um, I think my son took a couple of them too because they're missing. Um, but basically, you use them to do sounds with your students. I think I saw this first on TikTok, and um, but I can't remember who. Um, and now the kids are like crazy for them. They're more of a fidget thing, so it's just a sensory thing for kids, these, these things. But for us, we can use them to segment sounds and words, to break apart words and sentences, to, you can use them all for all kinds of things. To just, so it's just a hands-on tool to count things. Um, and you can use them in math as well, but I like to use them during my reading group time. Um, with my low, low babies, we would count how many um, words are in a sentence, or we would count how many uh, syllables. So if it was caterpillar, caterpillar, uh, it just hands on. Um, and then for some of like my middle babies, we would do sounds and words. And then you can even um, s segment the sound and then manipulate one of the beginning sounds. So like dog, d og, and then say, let's change the d to f and have them like pop it back and say it fog. Um, so we use those for a lot for that. So I picked up the little one because I just thought he was cute. But we find these in here in Florida, like they're everywhere, especially at like the touristy shops. So I just found 
this one it's a keychain one and I'm gonna hook it on and then have it and then I might use it as a reward somehow or I might use it for myself um also I uh, let me see if I can set you down that'll work um so <clears throat> if you've been watching my videos for a while you know my struggle between my iPad as a planner and my paper planner, which I bought last year. Let me get all my stuff out for today. Ooh, I don't want to spill. Um, so, oh no, and I spilled the exact thing I did not want to do. I'll have to clean it up in a minute. <clears throat> so I have my paper planner that I've always bought and I got this cover made. This was an Erin Condren cover on my Erin Condren planner. Um, I did a video about the Erin Condren planner, comparing the Erin Condren to the Happy Planner, which is the most popular. And the thing I, I love the Happy Planner, but the thing I don't like is the discs on the Happy Planner because it makes it hard to turn. And whenever I would turn them, I always felt like my pages were ripping. So I didn't like that. And I didn't want my pages to fall out, um, especially with as rough on my planner as I am. So I had always bought into Erin Condren. Well, this is not an Erin Condren. This is my cover from Erin Condren. But this is another planner I get from Michaels. I think it's another version of the Happy Planner. I don't know, this is what the inside looks like. Teacher Planner. Um, I will try to find it and link it, but this has been my favorite by far, as far as paper planners, because it's just like, it's exactly like an Erin Condren. Um, and one of the things I like is having the calendar and then right behind the calendar is the lesson plan section. But I didn't use this this year, hardly at all, and not until about the end of the year. Um, and then I kind of whipped it out just because it was easier and my iPad never seemed to be charged because my students would always forget their iPad. And so I would let them use my iPad. So it never seemed to be charged. Um, so I have tried to start planning with my iPad and my good notes um, and I use I bought two planners um, this one's from Etsy from um, Mrs. Cole's classroom um, and I thought I liked this one and, and I do um, really like that one and then I have another one that is from the lettered classroom that I bought and that's what this one looks like. And I did not like this one because there was no set uh, separation between the events in the day. So, I mean, if you can see, I don't know if it'll focus. Let's see if I can get a little focus there. Anyway, so this is Friday and it's not broken up by like reading that. There's no boxes. So it's just one big long day. So this would be more if you're teaching, I guess, one subject or maybe two subjects and you want to divide it up like that. I think that that works. Other than that, they are pretty similar in their um, breakdown. But I bought this one and I was like, oh, I don't like that. I need the boxes, the traditional boxes. So then I got this one. And I used this one so much last year. Um, but the thing that bothers me about it is there's something mentally and it's all me and I, I don't know maybe you're this way as well let me know if you are but there's something mentally that I enjoy about writing with a physical pen in a physical book it's like taking digital notes in a meeting there's just something for me about writing actual physical notes so I don't know I just couldn't I couldn't get past that I loved this I used it for basically everything I took it with me everywhere I go now this weekend I took the cover off my Apple Pencil so how you write with this one is you use an Apple Pencil and I did a video all about this I will try to find that video and either put it in the cards up here or link it down below um, but I had a cover on the outside of this now there's another Apple Pencil that's much cheaper it's not an Apple Pencil it's just a digital pencil but the connectivity of it and it's triangular and I didn't like that shape. It didn't feel natural on my hands. It might work really well for you. It's like $74. This one I think is 120. I can't remember how much the Apple pencils are anymore. But here's my iPad and I'm just gonna go to my plans for this week. So here's my plans for this week. You can see I don't even have some of the end of this week planned because I wasn't sure 
I'm out these two days in the morning. And so I had to kind of put some stuff in here. So I wasn't sure what we would actually get to those two days. So I kind of left that open. But here is, let me just flip you around so you can see it a little bit better. And as you can see, I just kind of jotted down my stuff on the side. In my actual planner, I had cute stickers and I put our stuff for the day. But because this is summer school, I'm just trying to like get it in. So our block is 8.30 to 9. We do morning meeting calendar and then we do our little writing activity that sits out. 9.30 when they come back from activity to about 10.15. We do Hagerty, Alpha Blocks. Um, we're looking at the short E this week. We're going to make a list of short E words. We're going to tap and write them on our whiteboards. Um, this is just, I put in centers just so I had that block of time on there to help me remember. But I'm going to introduce them to write the room. They're not going to start it yet, but I'm going to introduce it to them. Uh, this is our reading. We're doing How I Became a Pirate, read aloud. We're going to stop on page 21 and make a prediction. And we're going to talk about this word, slather, because we're using vocabulary this week. That's our, our skill that um, our district wants us to focus on. Um, math, they're going to come in. They're going to do ST math. We're going to do some counting collections. We're going to sabotage. We're going to do a Jack Hartman song. And then we're going to use 10 frames to show up to 15 on the 10 frame and then math groups they're going to do i ready math while they're in math groups we're going to work on writing numbers and we're going to do a game called five frame fill up these are for my um low 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 lows that um are still working on numbers one through five so you can see and that probably takes me so if i just went to a clean page and you just tap on the pencil and you can write and it writes just like having a piece of paper except it's slicker and I think it's just because of the cover I have on this. So I I hate my handwriting, y'all. I absolutely hate my handwriting. But if I was to do, let's just say I wanted to write the word pirate. Now I'm kind of looking through my camera to write this. Let me see if I can do that a little bit better. Um, oops, see, it's slicker. And you can adjust things, but I hate my handwriting. But the, if there are some really great features of it. I mean, there's... Um, the erase is pretty easy. This is pretty easy to where you can just kind of circle it and move it. Um, you just, so you don't have to erase. You don't have a mess. So I don't know. I'm going to continue using it. I told myself because I had this, I did not dive into this. So I am not going to buy this this year. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to save the 20, 30 bucks. I'm going to not buy into it is because I had this, I kept going back to this. It was like my default. If this is all I relied on, and this is much easier to walk around the classroom and hold, and I can insert things, I can look things up from online and insert pictures and stuff. If I really put my effort into this, then I wouldn't need that. So that's my spill. <laughs> I'm gonna get stuff set up for my day. Oops, I always do that. I always grab the camera from the wrong angle. Um, I'm gonna get the chit chat pulled up. I showed you guys the chit chat last week. Again, if you haven't seen that video, uh, go back and watch it. Just kind of like um, set up for summer school and some things that I love using. I'm gonna pull up our smart board calendar. My lips are so dry today, y'all. You ever put on lip gloss or lipstick that makes your lips dry? I try to use a lipstick that doesn't get off on my mask because I haven't been wearing a mat like makeup. I haven't been wearing makeup under my mask almost the whole school year. I just would use my creams and whatever and not wear and not wear makeup. Um but because we are lifting mask mandates like in businesses and restaurants and stuff, like when I leave here, I don't wear a mask. So I don't know, there's just something about putting makeup on again. And some days I probably won't. Um, let's go to Monday. So we're on week two. Marvelous Monday. Today we're working on beginning sounds of a picture. I love these chit chats. Um, that's probably one of the favorite things that I've discovered and bought into and I will continue to use even after um, everything doesn't have to be so digital again. I'm gonna continue to use those. So, I need to go get out, while that's loading, I need to go um, get out our books. 
I can hear the kids out in the hall, y'all. <laughs> it's so surreal. Turn on the smart board. Here we go. And stack. Oh, I'm gonna sit you down. This is like my box down here. I think I did this last week too. I had to set you guys down. I had to pull out all my pirate stuff. Because it's pirate week. I don't know what we're doing next after. I think we're doing dinosaurs next. Don't know. I also had these things, which don't pay attention to the, that, but these are great. Um, this is, these are from Amazon. I'll try to link these in my Amazon store. Um, cause I want to buy another set of them anyway. So I'll probably put them on my, in my store that I linked, um, down below. I don't know if I told you guys about that. So I think I've just wrote about it in my description. I've had a couple of people email me and say, we'd love to donate to your class. Can you create an Amazon store? So I did. I, well, it's a wish list. It's on a storefront. Um, so I'm just put stuff on my wish list that I would normally buy. Um, and then I'll just link it. And then if you wanted to guys want to donate to our classroom, that's wonderful. If not, you know where, where I get stuff and what I put in there and what I like. So I thought I would go ahead and just go ahead and create that. But this, I'm going to put another set in there because these are, I've had these for at least 10 years if I can find them. And I don't think I bought them from Amazon. I think I got them from like Lakeshore or something. I'm sure you could find them on Amazon, but they just have the plastic sleeves. And then this pack that I have right here is from Dee Dee Wills her roll and write um sets and I have a couple of them from kindergarten from that one year I taught kindergarten that's when I bought them that's when I taught kindergarten so they come in a pack of three like this one's tearing up you can see it and I just put the letter one in that I had um because I thought we could roll letters and then like yell out words that have that sound as like a warm-up so like if they rolled rabbit or they rolled r they could yell out rabbit that sort of thing so that's what I'm getting out. And we're doing the, ooh, How I Became a Pirate, which I don't see in my stack. And that's like my whole lesson today, y'all. Oh, I gotta go find that book. All right, I gotta go find that book. I'll check in with you later. Hi guys, so it is Wednesday. I think the last time I talked to you, it was Monday. <laughs> And then things got really busy because I had um, my meeting on Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning, this morning. So it's just been really busy. Um, and now we are trying to get moved out of this room and moved into our permanent room. And it's like 9,000 degrees outside. So usually when it rains, like everywhere else in the United States, doesn't it get cooler after it rains? Sometimes I guess it gets a little more humid or hum more sticky, but overall pretty, uh, like a little bit of a coolness comes. God, in Florida, man. He's like sweat more and we've had some like thunderstorms. I just feel so thirsty. So um, the room that we are in right now, we are transitioning the kids to the permanent room that we're gonna be in um, for the remainder of summer school. So let's visit about this week. Let's talk about this week. Um, Monday was a pretty good day. They were a little chatty on Monday. I'm gonna sit down. I need a break. Um, they were a little chatty on Monday. They, um, you know, I said just coming back and having me again after having another teacher, but like, eh, you know, not, not bad, you know, nothing that you wouldn't expect from, from kindergartners. Um, then yesterday morning, I swear there must be like a full moon or something. Yesterday morning they were like fighting with each other. The sub was just like they kept getting in stuff that they weren't supposed to get in. They were chasing each other around the room. They were horse playing. They were turning flips in the room. It was just a really weird day for her. And I noticed the same thing when I came back from my, my uh, meeting that they, like I would sit, I would literally be in, a sen in the middle of a sentence. For example, it was math <clears throat> when I came back. And I would be in the middle of explaining something or doing an addition sentence with them or building a number or something and I would be saying something and two or three of them would just turn and start talking about random stuff um, and again it's very 
appropriate for their age, but these kids aren't brand new kindergartners. These are kids that are coming into first grade, so they should have a little bit more of a boundary um, with that kind of stuff. I feel like they think because it's summer school, it's like not real school, so they can play. They did the same thing with me today, so I had to like sit down and talk to them. You know, we're here to learn. We want to build our brain muscle. We want to be ready for first grade. Um, we want to have fun, and we can only do fun things if we're listening um, to Mrs. Chris Foley. So, whew, just chatty. They're just chatty. Uh, it's just a chatty group. It's just a wild group. Even our cafeteria staff um, said that their behavior during lunch was like they were very babied, um, which is something I noticed. Um, it just makes me think that, you know, if they spill something at home or they drop something on the floor, somebody comes behind them and picks it up instead of having them do it themselves. It's just like all like little things. I don't know. You let me know if you see the same thing from your from your uh, young ones if you teach young grades. Um, so what are we doing right now um, in class? So the, since I had a sub, I left kind of a, a like a skeleton lesson plan. It's just a few things, but mostly like worksheets and practice pages, activities for them to do because I was only gone for a couple hours in the morning and that was it. So they had some iPad time on Epic. They did a little bit of their iReady. They had a couple different practice pages for like identifying letters and sounds. Um, and they had some like cut and paste, like cut the picture to match the word or cut the picture to match the sound. Um, and then in math, we have just been continuously building numbers to 10, identifying the numbers to 10, um, and practicing our handwriting up to 10. Um, I feel like they're doing very well with that. Um, all of them, even my struggling ones. Tomorrow will be a true test though, because the last two days have just been crazy. And if, we've been working on some like basic addition, so addition to five. Um, just to kind of get them started. And they've been doing really well with that. We started off just sabotaging um, like on the board, like a dots. And then I started doing like two dots and one dot. And so then I had one of my students said, two and one makes three. So that kind of led into the, oh yes, this is, remember when we were in kindergarten, we learned about addition. And so we drew the note or wrote the numbers and talked about the addition sign again. They all remembered it and they did very well. So I feel like that they're, they're really good on their addition. Um, they just are having trouble with the concept of a number, if that makes sense. So, um, where are we at? I've got a mess of a room and I need to get out of here today. My goal again, we're only paid until 215. My goal is to get out of here by 245 because I had a late day yesterday because it was storming. And then in Florida, if it's storming, you can't release students. Um, the parents can come and get them, but you can't release them. Um, the parents have to be, they have to be under their parent parental supervision or their guardian. Um, so we were here waiting for the lightning and the storm to pass until almost three. So it's a long day. Um, so yes, I want to be out of here by 2.45 because after I left yesterday, I still had to run errands to get set up for my meeting today. So it was a late day last night for me and I want to go home and I want to get some stuff like organized still and I want to think about Pirate Day on Friday. I don't know. I just have a kind of a lot on my mind. So 2.45 is my goal. It is 2.25 right now. I'm going to flip you around and show you the state of the room. And I'll be right back. So, um, I've already stacked this pot of tables right here and a couple from here that, of students that were absent. I'm going to clean out these desks. There's just something in that desk I need to clean out and stack those chairs. And I have one desk over here I need to clean out. And then the rest of them can get stacked. And they all just get stacked over here so they can clean the rug. But could you tell that I was a little jumpy there for a second? The janitor popped in to see how long it was going to take me. So I'm going to get busy. I'm going to set you down.
difference. So just to give you an idea, this is what we're looking at. All of that stuff's going back upstairs. This is ours. Actually, that's my teaching partner's um, stuff. It's gotta go back upstairs. And I gotta come back for those two black bins because that is hers and those have to go back to her room. But that's what we're looking at. Cleaned up, cleaned out, ready to go. So I hope I'm in frame here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign off with you for today. Tomorrow I'll be able to visit with you a lot more because um, I will be here just by normal time and I'll be able to visit with you about our day. Kind of show you what I'm thinking about hopefully for Pirate Day and just check in with you. So I will see you. So I lied. Um, I had to stop by my room to kind of clean up and turn off our fans. And I thought I would show you the setup that we had for our work day. So that way if you wanted to do something like that, then I think it worked pretty well. Um, and then that way if you wanted to do something like that, you could. So let me flip you around and show you what we got. Okay, so I have to put these books up. So what I did was I had my three tables set up. I had my computer and my printer set up. This was like our laminating station, if you can see all that. We um, laminating and then this is a hole punch and our electric staple stapler. And I'm actually gonna take one of my laminators back home because I need it at home my laminating sheets, but we have everybody's laminators plugged in at one point, warming up, and then we didn't even end up using them because we got tied up doing other stuff. Um, our copiers and, pr and printers, so just like massive stuff. So we sat here and met here, um, and what we worked on was the stuff that's in this folder. Okay, so what we did was I printed off this calendar, and we went in and we plugged in all the national days of whatever's like national day of tell a joke. Um, and we plugged those in and so that we could do some of those throughout the year. We put in our 50th day of school, our 100th day of school, our 120th day of school. We plugged in like our general units that we wanted to teach. So we wrote them down and we just, we just filled these calendars up, which is kind of what's over here. Um, so for example, I'm gonna start with, well, here's October. So for October, you can see that we are gonna do like pumpkin themed stuff. We're still following our standards and our scope and sequences, which I would show you, but it has all of our district information on it. So I can't show those, but um, so like, we're still doing all of that and it's all aligned, but this way they're learning like what stuff that's meaningful to them. So we're doing pumpkins and then we're gonna do nocturnal animals. We actually have a, bird sanctuary um i think they're in like south orlando where they're located i have to call them so and they bring like local birds so i'm going to see if they can come up um one day that week um spiders and like all of our holidays and such this is just a generic calendar that i found on the internet if i can find it again i will link it down below because i like blank calendars like this Y'all, I tried last night to find blank calendars in the stores for next year, and they're not out yet. It's so frustrating. You would think, you know, middle of June, that the calendars would be out for July through June next year, but they're not. So, that's what I did. Um, and so, I gave everybody a folder with our scope and sequences for each um, academic area, and then a calendar, and our new Florida standards, um, which we have our new reading standards, which are really, really cool. Um, well, not really, really cool, but cooler. I think they're more streamlined. I don't know why my hand is in the way of my camera. I can't hold it. Let me try flipping you over. Hold on. Um, so we did that. Um, I gave everybody just this little sticker sheet for their planners that I found and that, and then we made some jelly bags. Um, made some jelly bags. We made this thing today for, I just showed them how they could make it and how easy it was with these little things. This is stuff I found at the Dollar Tree. I got the jelly from the Dollar Tree. It's just um, hair gel. And we made those. I want to put food coloring in it though. And then uh, what else did we make? Oh, we made sand trays today. So we did those. So yeah, um, I think it worked out well. I actually pulled out a really old set that I had. This is my old calendar folder. Um, and then like it's, gosh, this is 15 years old at least. 
So back before graphics were really great. Y'all look at this. This is so funny. Um, I was trying to like, look, look at these graphics. <laughs> like those are not so bad. Those are just clip art from Microsoft Word, but look at these graphics. So old school. Y'all, this is so old school, but it's cute. Like the kids won't care. So we decided we were gonna turn this in for copies. It's a lot of copying. I gotta get it approved uh, and give them like reasons why we want it because it's gonna be like 20 per class. And there's probably, you don't know, 300 sheets in there. So it's gonna take a while. Um, so I gotta do that tomorrow, but it's our calendar folder. Um, I used to do this every single morning with my students. And by the time in the end of the year rolled around, they could do it independently. So it just starts off with the days of the week and the months and birthday graphs. And then you do stuff with the months and you write the, d the days. And then you do like an estimation jar, which we may or may not take out. You keep up with the teeth that are lost that month. You do some number patterns and work, fact families, problem of the day, that sort of thing. You can find a lot of these on TPT, but none that I have found have this much in it. So I may recreate it with better graphics and, and take some time this summer to recreate that. That might be a job I do. So if you would like that, leave me a comment below and let me know and I might like start working on that. It'll take me a couple weeks to kind of get it done and create it, but I think it would be something that might be beneficial for a lot of people. It's really, really great and the kids learn so much. And if I do that, then I'll do a blog post about that when I, when I get it done. Um, so yeah, that's our setup. And now I really am going to leave because, oh, my watch is messed up because it is almost three o'clock. So I will see you guys later. Morning friends. <clears throat> so we are in the new room. This is, um, my teaching partner. This is her kindergarten classroom. Um, it feels so good to be back in a kindergarten classroom that is like she did a great job setting it up for me the other day um I don't know if you can see but we have all their little stuff out um on their tables that we the kids brought their stuff up here yesterday with me <clears throat> we have the little carpet space everything is just set up um and not have to worry about the cleaning crew and and the summer cleaning and stuff um our other uh, classroom that we were in the it's a first grade teacher's classroom that hadn't gotten like prepped and cleaned. So like I showed you in that video, everything still had to be kind of stacked up and we couldn't have a whole lot of stuff hanging. And I didn't want to disrupt like her shelving and her stuff <clears throat> in that room because that's her space. And I just wouldn't, I wouldn't want that to my space. But my teaching partner came in the other day and she set up her room and got it kind of put things out where she wanted them because she teaches the every other week. So I've got the kids stuff in here yesterday i'm going downstairs now to make some coffee and get their ipads and some of the rolly carts and other stuff so i'm going to be back and forth all morning while the computer loads um does its updates and that sort of thing so i'm going to go do that and i will be right back hi guys so it is lunchtime it's actually the end of lunch um i am just kind of cleaning up it was a morning you know I told you when I left you this morning I was going down to get coffee so I have been keeping my like bag of coffee stuff in our fridge like that's attached to the office because um most everybody's classroom fridges are unplugged um so I just keep my stuff if I'm gonna make coffee I just keep it in a like a lunch bag and I just kept my lunch bag in that fridge. And yesterday I forgot to grab my lunch bag and I left it in the fridge. So this morning, it has been a morning. I am extremely tired today because my daughter was traveling from Arkansas back down here um, last night and she flies on planes and she flies by herself. She has since we moved. She's a seasoned flyer and she feels very comfortable. I feel very comfortable um, with her flying never had any issues but last night was one of those nights it's like every mother's worst nightmare y'all I guess with all of the delays in southwest because she always flies southwest I guess with the all the de delays with southwest the last couple of days they are were so behind or they were having computer issues or booking issues or whatever I don't know but she got stuck in Dallas almost all night she was supposed to arrive back in Orlando at 10 o'clock last night which would have put her boarding the plane at about seven in Dallas. Um, 
and being on the plane and it's only about a two hour flight and then you have the time change. So it was like the perfect flight for her. Um, but she didn't even get to Dallas until after seven because the flight leaving from where she was at was late. And so they had to switch her. But then all of those flights, she didn't leave Dallas, y'all, until after midnight. So she didn't arrive home until after 2. Um, it was almost 3 o'clock when, when the flight landed. I just, my heart was just aching last night. I was in tears all night. I was like hyperventilating, crying all night. You know, there's nothing you can do. You're stuck as a mom. You just sit there and you talk to her on the phone and you just make sure that she's okay. And Southwest has always been so wonderful. And they're, I think they're the best for minor flights. I think they are the absolute best. We have never had any issues. But last last night, I guess, it just was one of those nights. It was just our worst nightmare. So needless to say, I was awake all night. Until she arrived home and she was safe in her bed at 4 in the morning. Because <laughs> the airport is about 45 minutes to an hour from where we live. Not even that um, with no traffic. It's probably close to just between between 35 and 45 minutes. Um, so she got home about four o'clock in the morning. So that, that's about the time where I was like, okay, she's home and she's in bed and I can go to sleep. Um, so, well, thankfully she only does that a couple times a year. Um, now she's old enough to fly Allegiant. So that's probably what we'll move to because it's a direct flight and it's directly to her dad. So that's where we're at. I'm exhausted. And then my coffee stuff was moved out of that fridge because they were cleaning that fridge yesterday and I didn't know. So I was freaking out this morning because I had no coffee. And I had to get the kids and we had just moved into this room. And so I was trying to get reset up and it has just been a morning. So I'm sorry I haven't checked in with you before now. Yeah, I actually have to go get the kids again. But math is going to be fairly easy this afternoon. We're starting edition, beginning edition. Oh, I needed to get some stuffed animals out of my room. That's what I wanted to do. And so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to... Um, we're going to go play outside for a little bit and we're going to come back and we're going to do some quiet time with our iPads, some games, and then do some addition practice and then it'll be time to go home. So I will check in with you guys very quickly after school. So it's after school. It's so hot. It's so hot today. Um, I was going to stay and try to do a little bit of setup, but do you ever get those big ideas to do something and then when it comes down to it, you're blindly exhausted? I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to set up for Pirate Day tomorrow. I keep like Googling pictures of pirate setups and all I see is like black and red tablecloths and pirate flags and stuff like that. So I think I'm going to go to the Dollar Tree and pick up some black and red tablecloths. I think my plan is to cover their tables with black tablecloths and then get a couple red ones and like shred them. Put pirate flags on top of the tables. I don't think I'm going to try to cover anything because it's still summer and technically we're not supposed to be putting a whole bunch of stuff up over windows and all that. I don't, I don't know. I was going to try to make a pirate ship, but I don't really, I don't really know how in this room and I, I hate to like, I don't know. I think I would rather just come up with a lot of ideas, a pirate themed ideas to do tonight and then just execute those versus trying to decorate because I think I've realized that these kids they'll think tablecloths on their table and pirate flags hanging up all over the room and maybe if i can like i might bring my sharks from my classroom and pop those on the ceiling um just to make it feel like oceany or whatever i don't know i might i'm gonna play around with some ideas tonight but i am so sweaty and hot and tired from like that story i told you earlier about my daughter being stuck so we were up all night long so i'm just i'm exhausted i'm going to go home, cook dinner, and sit on the couch and make plans for Pirate Day tomorrow. I had full intentions of last week while I was off making copies and printing stuff, but it was very difficult because I couldn't get down into my classroom last week. <clears throat> so we couldn't do that to bake copies. So, and I didn't, I was out of ink at home, not out of ink, but out of like copies for ink um, with the HP program. So I'm going to put my, cause I love HP Insta Ink. I'm going to put my referral code down below if you want to try HP Insta Ink. Um, I think I also told you at the beginning of the week that I um, have an Amazon wish list. Um, a lot of this stuff on there is stuff that I use regularly. Um, and then I think I'm going to try to see if I can create a storefront so you can see things I buy 
for my classroom from here on out. That way, if you need ideas of things, if you're a brand new teacher or something, then you um, need ideas, you can go there. Um, so I'll have those linked below. Um, I don't know how much vlogging I'm going to get to do tomorrow because when I get in, I'm going to be setting up. Um, and I'm going to try to get in about an hour early and get set, stuff set up. But you know how that goes. Like this morning, I came in plenty early to do stuff and my coffee stuff was gone. I don't even know if I told you guys this story, but my coffee stuff was had been moved. So I didn't even get to have my coffee on time. I was spent 45 minutes looking for it. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and I will try to check in with you guys sometime tomorrow. Good morning, friends. So it is pirate day. Uh, I don't have long to talk this morning. I was just going to kind of break down what I was thinking. Um, I'm going to try to draw out a pirate, a pirate ship um, to go on like one of the front walls somewhere. I was going to make like an ahoy sign to go right there. Um, last night, but I couldn't get my printer to do what I thought I wanted it to do. I picked up tablecloths for the tables, black ones, and I'm going to like shred red stripes over them. And then I made like little signs for the middle of the table. Um, and then we're just going to do a bunch of fun pirate activities. And I'll show those to you during my break or during lunch or something. So I got to get busy because it is 730 and the students come in in one hour and I know it's going to take me probably at least 30 minutes. So, okay, friends. So this is the final product of this stuff, except I still have to put the signs up. I've got to go down to my room and get, I don't know what that's, what's going on here. There's our pirate ship, you guys. Isn't it cute? It turned out pretty quick for me throwing it together in 15 minutes. And then the tables with the signs on them. I'll show you a finished product of all that later, but yeah, I'm going to go make copies and I will check in with you guys at activity. Okay, so it is um, our music time. So I'm just making copies and getting stuff together. I thought I'd show you what um, we're gonna do. Obviously the kids are gonna make a little pirate hat. So they're gonna do that in a little bit. Um, I have found several things online. I will try to link as much as I can, but I got stuff like really random last night. <clears throat> found stuff really random. Um, so I, um, I may not be able to find everything. I'll do the best I can, but I found this little treasure map thing. It was already done, and this is from Growing Kinders. And it's just a free resource. It takes you all the way around the school, and each spot you put the little um, clues. And then at the end, I'm gonna just use my treasure chest that I already have, that I use in my classroom. I'm just gonna have that, and then let them pick a toy out of the treasure chest. Um, and that's gonna be like the last thing that we do today. So I'm going to set that up at lunch. I'm going to cut uh, cut it up on my um, thing now. For math today, they're going to play a math game. They're going to do like memory with these things. Hold on one second. My husband's calling me. Hi guys. So it's the end of the day. Um, our afternoon went so much better than our morning did. I think the rotation of centers. Um, I almost wonder if the centers were hard enough, like they were challenging enough. I know they were fun. Um, I know I showed the centers to you, but I almost wonder if they were challenging enough to keep them from being a little out of it while they were doing them, if that makes sense. Like, um, I think the math one was probably, like kids don't play memory games anymore. So without us having practiced it, although we've done it in small group with alphabet, Without us having like done that specific one, that might have been completely like over their head because they were just matching them, which was fine. Um, I was trying to give them 10 minutes per center and then I cut it back to seven about halfway through, which was a much better time. But just, we never did find the two, no, two or three missing gold coins to the alphabet. I don't know why would someone did, would want to take random letters. It was like Q and V and another letter that was missing. So maybe they're just roaming around the room somewhere and we just didn't see them, which is okay because they were little foam pieces, but um, you know, you go through all the trouble of making the games and then for the pieces to be missing after like 14 minutes, 20 minutes of, of rotation, it was just frustrating. Um, but the afternoon went really well. So after we did recess, we came back, we did um, a math activity where we were doing practicing a, some addition with um, pirate characters. I'll show you. It's from that same character pack. So we had I had a whole bunch of these extra pieces, and I would put the little pirates out in front of them, and then I would have them create um, addition sentences 
I had little parrot ones um, and the little treasure maps. And that was super fun. They really got into that. Um, and then we made our pirate hats, um, which we were meant to do this morning, and they were way too small. Um, the little shape of it was just way too small. I wish I had found one that was a bit bigger, but I was, I was not thinking they would be that small. So they turned out okay. Um, and then I wish I just copied it on black paper for them or just bought pirate hats at the party store or something. So that if I do a pirate day again, um, that would be something I would do. I would just get like order pirate hats from like Oriental Trading um, for them. But everything else that so we did our treasure hunt and that was wonderful. It was just the right amount of clues. So they ended up having to go to the PE pavilion. They ended up going um, to the, our music room, to the library, to the cafeteria, to the principal's office, which was a challenge because they didn't want to be quiet. They were so excited, which was, you know, okay. But so, you know, when you're a teacher, you're like, oh my gosh, guys, we have to be quiet because they're like, they're on the phone. And <laughs> so, um, and then we ended up finding the treasure in another kindergarten classroom. Um, so they had fun. They thought it was, it was wonderful. That ended our day. We had like 10 minutes left. So I just put a, a Jake and the Neverland Pirates cartoon on because those are about 12 minutes long. So we just watched one of those and they loved that because I don't think kids watch Jake and the Neverland Pirates. When my, um, Sebastian, when my middle child was younger, that was like his second favorite show. Um, and I don't think kids watch that one anymore. So they really liked it and it kind of wrapped up our day um, perfectly. So overall, a fairly good day. Um, like I said before, I think just coming in and the tables being decorated and stuff being, you know, hanging up, they were so excited naturally as any child would be. So trying to do a bunch of educational stuff on top of it um, it's a lot to ask, I think, in the summer. So, if we do, if I do a week of dinosaurs, which won't be until the middle of July, because I will be teaching, um, I will be teaching in a couple weeks, but it's only a couple day week. Um, and then we have a break for 4th of July, like, it's like a two week break. Um, so, if I do dinosaurs, I don't know that I'm going to do much. I would love if I could find a dinosaur blow up. But again, I think that's one of those things that it's going to throw the kids off. It's going to make them crazy. Um, so we'll see. But that's the next theme plan. Um, the, the week that I come back that is supposed to be just a couple days is going to be kind of like a review of skills week, practice, um, just because it's some kind of fun summer stories. And then we're going to uh, be out for a break for two weeks. So, um, so I wanted to kind of visit with you guys about the state of my room. So I have to empty my teacher desk this afternoon. I have to empty that. I have to go get some books out of the book room because they're surplusing a lot of our book room books and my heart, my teacher heart, I can't say no to those books. So I'm gonna go see if I can find some really good decodables in the mix. I'm gonna see if I can find some books that might challenge some of my, my upper grade kids. This is how every teacher gets all of these books. Y'all, if you wait for your library to have to like get rid of a, a collection of books, you might get some really good deals. So I'm gonna have to go down there and do that. Um, I have to empty my teacher desk because we can get rid of our teacher desk. I'm so happy. We can get rid of our teacher desk. So this is what I needed y'all's help with. And this is where I'm gonna end my video today because I really want advice because my plan is, my hope is that I can come up maybe one day next week, maybe, and maybe like do a little rearranging. If not, I'm gonna wait till like the following week on the Thursday we have a teacher work day. So I'm going to wait till that day, but I'm going to spin you around. I'm going to see if you can help give me some ideas because you guys have some of the best ideas and I am so confused. And if you can post pictures, if you have pictures of your classroom and your arrangement, let me know. Um, I finally don't have to have a teacher desk, which I have never had until I moved to this district. This district, um, the last couple of years I've been in this district, they've just required us to have teacher desks. I think it's kind of up to the principal. Um, but the first classroom that I was ever in when we moved down here, I had an office and it was beautiful and it was giant. And so my teacher just, just hung out in the office. And it was, it was great. And then we, you know, I moved to the school. They don't, we don't have the office spaces because we have these little nooks, which in the other classroom is where the office would be. And that would, was the size of my office. So you can see how a teacher desk would fit 
fine in there. So let me spin you around. I really want to get some ideas from you because you guys have some of the best ideas. I know I've talked to you a lot about teacher spaces. I don't like a teacher desk and I'm not going to have one. So please don't try to talk me into keeping it because it's going. It's going this afternoon actually. Um, and then I'm going to rearrange and I have a couple different ideas. So I need your opinion. Friends, so I am not going to put mailboxes on the countertops. I'm going to do my mailbox system differently. And I'm kind of thinking of ideas. So if you have mailbox system that you've used, I've used the crate with the file folders in it. I always feel like the file folders never fit correctly in the crate, so they always fall over. So I don't like that idea. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. So give me some ideas. I've had mailbox system for probably... 12, 13, 14 years, and I've always liked it, but I don't like the fact that it takes up space on this countertop, so I don't know what to do there. But my first option is to make this my library. Um, have I have a shark tent that hangs down, get a, a new rug, I have a bunch of pillows, a bunch of chairs. What we've been told is what our, what our board is probably going to pass uh, next month's board meeting is business as usual next year, masks might be optional, um, Kids can have um, seating closer together again. You can We can kind of proceed with caution, you know, is kind of what I think it's going to be like. I don't know. We'll find out at the end of July. But I'm thinking to make this my library. Um, option two, which I don't necessarily like, but this is an option, so I want to throw it out there. This is my fridge. I always have my fridge and my coffee bar and my teacher filing cabinets and stuff back here. Move those back, but spin this sucker around, which I kind of like, but not really, because then I feel like this is a bunch of wasted space. Have my teacher table pushed all the way over here and just one of like some of my bookshelves and stuff that I use for guided reading would be along this wall. And then that would free up space for like a center over here and then my tables, and I'm only gonna have these tables. I'm not gonna have any desks next year. So that's option two. Option three is to have my teacher space back here, move my kidney table over here, filing cabinets over here, um, get a smaller fridge that would go underneath. This guy is gonna get moved down or, or vice versa and have this as like teacher space um, and then, or I think this guy would get moved down and then have this as like my teacher desk space where I would need like pencils and filing stuff and all that. And, and where I could kind of sit and work with my laptop. And the reason I say that is because I have lots of plugins over here. So I could, I could have this set up kind of nice. That's my favorite option. I don't know if I'm actually going to like it because I'd have to get rid of my big fridge and move to a smaller fridge. And then I'm thinking to get another one of my little carts for like a coffee bar because I can't not have my coffee bar. So that's option three. So option three is the kidney table over here, have this space as teacher space, put my fridge underneath so it's kind of tucked away. Um, we do have to have a designated space for, we have some extra teachers that are gonna be working in the building next year to work with students. So I'm gonna use that cart for that teacher and they can just kind of house over here. One, two, three, I'm gonna have my couch back in here. They're gonna have flexible seating. Um, or option one, like I said, um, all the kind of stuff, or this is reading center. This would be reading center. Um, this would not move. Oh, I don't know if I said this. Another option is to use this corner as reading, as reading center. So use this little nook as a reading center. My tent would hang down right here. My bookshelves would be over here. They'd kind of be backed up into this little corner. Obviously the desk is about to go. Um, I gotta empty that thing. Whew, that's gonna be a task. Um, and I don't know. I guess I would still move this around. I may move that around, make this reading center, still have my fridge and stuff back there, but have my teacher's stuff right there. I don't know. I've always just liked having my computer set over near here. So let me know what you think, and I'll check in with you in a little bit. Hi guys, okay, so I'm back from our library area from the free books. <laughs> and I'm gonna kind of spin you around and explain to you what I got. Okay, so before I show you all the books, the more I think about this area, the more I think that I'm going to do it. Um, oops. The more I think I'm going to do the library over here. 
I think that's gonna work. Um, and then I think I'm gonna have a table over there for something. Just because of the wires. I wanna be careful of the wires. Okay, so let me show you what I got. So these are some books that were down there. I got like all of that, y'all. All of that. And I could have gotten hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more. There were so many. They're just old books, but there's some sets that are like brand spanking new. So I tried to get like five of each level, but I did not get the low levels because those babies need decodables. So I got like a few hit and miss here and there, a few C's, a few D's, uh, just in case, E's, um, I don't know why I have I's in the middle, but E, F, G, H, I's, J's, K's, L, M, a few M's there. There's some L's back, back there, and then some more M's. And the reason why I got, I got the most M's, because that seems to be um, where, like, my higher kids, um, I hope I'm in focus here. <laughs> where my higher kids, that seems to be what, like, where they're always at if they're high. Um, so, hold on, let me stop that. Anyway, so if they are like a higher level reader that like they always come in at like a L, M, N, um, I didn't go much, uh, higher than M because I would rather use like, um, authentic chapter books and, um, I'm sure that I'm going to stumble upon some better quality, um, small group books for if they are higher, but very rarely do I have kiddos that are higher than around a level N. They might be able to read it, but they certainly don't really comprehend it quite yet. So I stopped at M just for my sanity purposes, but I got the most M's because, um, I didn't want to get a lot of lower level books because again, I still plan to do mostly decodables. Um, but once they get to a point where they're decoding very fluently and they don't have any issues with any of the phonics patterns. They're just a natural reader. Um, and a lot of times in first grade, I see that happening around a level F, G, somewhere around there. So that was kind of my guiding point, like one basket of like mix, then I got a few E's, F's, and then I kind of hit it up from there. So that was the thought behind it. Okay, so I am packing up to go home. I do not work next week. I do not plan on doing any work next week, um, just because I feel like, you know, when I'm here through the week, and plus we had our team stuff this week, I just feel like I put in a lot this week uh, mentally, and summer is about um, getting some, oops, getting some um, relief and taking care of our mental health, so that's what I plan on doing. I plan on doing some fun days with my kiddos. I don't know what we'll do. Maybe a water park next week. Maybe a beach day next week. Um, yeah. So I don't plan on doing any work next week. So there's not going to be anything for me to film. I will probably put this video up Monday if I had to guess. Um, of course it's Friday now. So I'll probably put it up Monday. Um, and then I will be back on here at the end of June to start my next week of summer school. That's not true. I will be doing a little bit of work next week. Uh, I did promise my team that I would revamp the calendar folder. So I'm gonna take that stuff home so that I can do that for them. So I lied, but I'm not gonna do any more than that. I need to take that stuff home. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend um, and a fantastic another week of summer break. And if I do anything that I can film, I certainly will. If not, I will see you next time. Bye.